Valerie, and you have reached Stitching in the Barn. So welcome, come on in. Um, today is the 22nd of January, and it's a beautiful sunny day. Um, we didn't get the terrible ice that I had feared. Um, we did get some cold wind though, and it is really cold today. It was really, really cold yesterday. It, uh, well, I can hardly complain. I'm in Pennsylvania and I, I feel for you Midwesterners out there because I think you get it much worse or you've had it much worse and you seem to get it a lot more than we do. So I will stop complaining. Um, I'm not complaining. I do love winter, um, but man, was it cold. <laughs> so anyway, here we are. And um, I think I'll start by showing you what I've been working on. I, I have worked a lot. I think because it was so cold, we would just build big fires in our wood-burning stove and hunker down by the fire and keep going. So I'm stitching up, stitching up a storm this week. So I'll, I'll start with my um, finishes. I finished the third uh, glitter house in the Little House Needleworks. And I think I told you before, my plan for these is to try and finish them in some sort of little block so that I can um, tuck them in amongst some real putz houses that I have with the glitter on them. And uh, sometime I'll show you some little tiny people that I have that I want to dot around there as well, which I think would be a cute little thing. My style is not usually the pastel Christmas. I'm usually very, very traditional red and green. But I couldn't resist these, especially on this glittery fabric. I just thought that was fun. It was something, you know, something different here. I do have a piece of paper I'll put behind there. It's just kind of, I thought they were pretty. They were cute. So I worked on that. Um, another finish I have is um, the Farms of Hawk Run Hollow. I finished the first block, which is this one. Um, I don't know why I feared these so much. They are quite intense. I mean, you look at it and you think, well, that's quite simple and it's DMC and I can do this. And it's actually, there's quite a lot of detail in there that you don't realize until you get stitching them. So they are just time consuming, but I think one a month is doable. Um, so I'm pleased with that. Uh, I may make some changes because I showed it to my sister and she said, why don't you put the name of our grandfather's farm, which is Armadale Farm. So I may do that, um, but here's mine. And uh, the only other change that I know I want to make on the pattern is my mom's name was Jean. So instead of Grammy Jane's apple butter, I think I'm going to make it Grammy Jean's apple butter because that's what the children called her as well, Grammy Jean. So I thought that would be kind of fun. Um, had some other finishes. Uh, this was from my nine Stitch Nine Challenge. Um, some that I had chosen from that, and Boo to You uh, was Homespun Elegance pattern. Um, I was originally just going to do this guy, and I ended up doing this guy as well. well. The truth was that it was really bitterly cold, and this called for weeks swamp water floss, and I had only brought one skein of it into the house from the barn, and I was too chicken to go out and get another skein until today or yesterday, so uh, when it warmed up a little. So I stopped work on him and proceeded to do him. And that was very quick. And I think because I'm stitching on 30, or I think it's 30 count linen, um, or 28 count even, it's going very fast. I'd forgotten. Um, so that was, that was a pleasure to stitch. And I'll show you what I've done so far. I've got this little guy. And I will do him as they did in the pattern. Um, I think I will fold the edges under and do um, a buttonhole stitch around on some wool I have. I have some um, RNG Weeks Dye Works wool, which I think would be cute. Um, you know, this is kind of a cream colored linen and this is more RNG and I was originally going to do them each like that, but I just, I kept going and I didn't want to stop. So I just did them both on the same and I'll hang them in different places. Like I'll put this guy in the house and I'll put him out in the barn or vice versa or something so that you know, it won't seem so samey samey. And this guy actually was so quick, I could, um, you know, I could even stitch him on some cream colored linen and give one to a friend or something. I might do that. But here's what I've gotten on the black guy. And all I have to, what, I can't remember to use this piece of paper. Um, 
all I have to do are the little circles around him and then do the satin stitch in here. But you know what? I kind of like him checkerboard. I'm having a hard time deciding, do I want to fill in with a satin stitch or do I want to leave him checkerboard? So I'm not sure about that. You can tell me below whether you think I should fill in the satin stitch to make him solid or whether I should leave him as a checkerboard guy. But I am going to put the little circles around. And the other thing I noticed was, if you look on the pattern, the circles they show are hollow. But when you read the pattern, they want you to make a solid circle like this one. So that's interesting too. And I think I might alternate, especially if I keep it checkerboard, I might do every other one like hollow, full, hollow, full, something like that. Um, decisions, decisions. Ah, um, I have some whips. I've been working on Jack, who's another of my um, Stitch 9 stash guys, and that's all through the night. He's very cute. But, you know, those little tartan trousers, for some reason they were so fiddly to me. They, this looks so straightforward and simplistic, and I, I kept frogging, frogging, frogging. It was quite frustrating, but I finally got him, I think. And then um, I've done the green trees in his sweater, but my, what color was that called for? Shutter green was much paler. So I'm not sure if I'm going to pull them out and do a different green or if I'm going to maybe do some sort of eye highlighting, you know, do some little um, stitches that look like evergreen trees or, you know, over the top to emphasize it with a darker thread or, or, or just do outlining. But this is as much as I have of him. I did have his head and I had to frog it out because I made some error. I don't know what. We've been watching television and stitching, and that's never a good combination, really. Um, I wanted to show you also that the fabric and pattern had arrived from Jen's stitching niche um, for the Brick House sampler, which was the Brenda Gervais. We were all going to do a Brenda Gervais a month. It's a beautiful pattern. I love this. And I really am excited to do this. But I followed... Jen's suggestion that of what she was going to do and it, it's um, a 46 count oh I dropped the paper 46 count beach walk that um, I think will be really pretty the colors are just gorgeous but 46 count what was I thinking I mean I'm looking at it I can do it if I take my glasses off. I see much better without... I either have to wear contacts or... Um, I can't think of what I was going to say. If I'm wearing contacts, it corrects for distance. Um, so if I want to stitch really... But then I can't see as well as up close as I can if I um, had no correction on at all. My close vision is very good. My nearsighted... I'm very nearsighted, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. Anyway. <laughs> Gosh. Um, this is 46 count. I don't know if you can see what it's like. It is very, very, very dense. So uh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to pull this off. I'm thinking I might prefer the Mushroom Lagana and <clears throat> doing it over one even. I'm going to try. We shall see if I am successful in that or not. I'll let you know if I'm ripping my hair out. And then one other one I would like to sneak in somewhere. It's not in part of the Stitch 9. It's not part of my do one a month. Uh, and just in the mood is Heartstring Samplery, Beth, Twist. B is for Valentine. I want to do some Valentine stitching. I'm just really wanting to. And I think this is so charming. And plus it's a V, so I like it. I did do one other one. Um, I forgot that I had joined this Crazy Annie's 2019 uh, Country Christmas Country Christmas Ornament Club. And the first one had arrived, and it looks like a very quick little stitch, so I did start that as well, because I want to try and keep up with all the one a months. I got started on the Woody Station Wagon, so I'm hoping to just hammer that out quickly. So I've been busy, but it's been really fun, and um, I've enjoyed every minute of it. Um, something else I would like to uh, talk to you about is 
um, my I had had this idea and before I heard about it, one Brenda Gervais a month and um, you know the stitch nine challenge and everything this like a uh, kindred stitcher was gonna have this be her year of um, I think it was blackbird design she wanted to do because she had a lot and she wanted to get through them and that was the idea behind behind Jen stitching niche doing the Brenda Gervais because she had a lot of those as do I and um, she wanted to do a lot on those but I had been thinking I would like this to be my year of fractors because I love fractors um, I do live in Pennsylvania you know it's Pennsylvania Dutch country and I, I thought about this um, if you're not from Pennsylvania, you may not realize Pennsylvania Dutch just means Pennsylvania German. It's not people from Holland. I just take that for granted that everybody knows that, but um, it was just a, you know, a nickname, Pennsylvania Dutch, but it really means German people. And I am just fascinated with fractors. I just love them. Um, I am going to include at the end some pictures of some little fractors that we have around. I have more that I, you know, I dot them around. Whenever I have one I can I have some very little ones I tuck them in windowsills and things like that too um, I just can't get enough of them um, so I'll show you the some that we have around our house but um, I don't know if everybody knows what a fractor is so I thought I would go to the bastion of knowledge um, aka Wikipedia and read to you what what it has to say about fractor it, which is a uh, folk art it's a highly artistic and elaborate illuminated folk art created by the Pennsylvania Dutch, named after the Fractor script associated with it. Most Fractor was created between 1740 and 1860. So Fractor originally was a script. Um, it was a break away from the Latin, I forget what text, what font they were using, but um, it, it was most closely associated with German people and it the letters are broken they're uh, they kind of interweave and that's hence the fractor um, it says fractor drawings so it originally was a font a script but it also uh, inspired these fractor drawings were executed in ink and or watercolors and found a wide variety of forms um, let's see marriage and house blessings book plates floral and figurative scenes um, fractures were executed entirely by hand and then eventually printing text became more common in later examples. Um, hearts, tulips, um, distal finks, um, they're all very typical symbols and uh, for people who don't know what a distal fink is, it's the um, a stylized goldfinch. It's just the Pennsylvania Dutch, maybe it's just the German word for it, but it, um, it represents happiness and good fortune. And it's often, you find it in um, signs and hex signs. And hex signs, by the way, um, there was high German and low German. And the, the high German, um, I, I can't swear to this, which is which, but um, one religious faction, probably like the Reformed Church, um, decorated everything. They decorate their barns, they decorate their walls, they decorate their houses. And then there was another form, I don't know what was considered the higher low, but it was the more um, austere, probably more like Mennonite Amish sect, that didn't go in so much for decoration. Although Mennonites, um, around me anyway, have beautiful fractors. So it probably over time it evolved, but I may not be giving you 100% accurate information, but I'm trying all by way to come along to my idea of a year of fractors. I did do, I did one, which I'll put a picture of, uh, which was an old Jeremiah Junction pattern. And I think I did it on Ada, or Aida, Ada. And um, I did change the wording slightly to make it a little more inclusive. A uh, gold star for anybody who looks at that photograph that I'm going to include and can tell me what I altered in the verse. Hope I don't get struck down for that. <laughs> but I did alter it slightly. Um, so I thought I would show you some of the patterns I've collected with fractors that I intend to do. 
Um, this is only a portion of my patterns. And I will say that I realized I went on to Lila's Designs website and she has some beautiful examples. I'm, I've got to get ordering from her because I was just drooling. So I'm going to go to Lila's website and order. Um, and I'll link that below. But um, I'll show you the other ones I have because they're beautiful. Um, the first one is called Queen Esther's Pure Heart and it's Scattered Seed Samplers. So there you have the tulip and the bird. That's all very typical. I love that. And then this one is from La Di Da and it's called, mm, I should take these out of the plastic so they don't gleam in your eyes, um, Fractor Flowers. So again, it's the bird and the flowers. And that's lovely, I think. And then I have um, Heartstring Samplery. Fractor bird and bouquet, and I intend to do them both. We all know what the road to mm, is paved with. Good intentions. But here's fractor bird and bouquet. And I think that's pretty. Very simple. I think these wouldn't take that long to do. Uh, I think Plum Street Sampler has several, but the only one I have here today to show you is the Blackbird Fractor. So that is this one. Come on, fingers, work. Work! There we go. So I like that one too. Although I don't think the blackbird is as common. I should do a little research and see. I think it's usually the distal fink or sort of a blue bird. Um, you know, distal fink, the gold bench is very yellow. This one is called Moon Dance and it's Kathy Barrick. I'm not sure this is actually a fractor, but it, see, it had that feeling. You know, the sort of coverlet, you know how the woven coverlets of Pennsylvania, um, it had that feel to it. So I'm including it in my fractor year anyway. Um, this one for sure, Early Fractor Drawing by Kathy Barrick. And That's fun. Again, with the design in the bird, I like. And another Kathy Barrick. I seem to have a lot of Kathy Barracks here. Bit of an obsession. Um, I love this one. Bird's eye view. Look at this one with the great houses. And the lovely big bird. I think he's wonderful. And then I've got Strawberry Bird. And I like this one because the design, the pattern, is tucked inside the wings of the bird. And I thought that was kind of cool. Sort of different. All of these are things I probably ought to get framed. I'm thinking, ooh, cha-ching. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see how, uh, how they turn out. But they look so pretty in these frames. And some of them are like these tiger eye frames. Maybe I can show this without taking out the plastic. This is Frederick. Um, by Carriage House Samplings. And this, I think, is like a ti um, tiger's eye frame, I think they call that. It's like the mustard yellow with the fork dragged through. You can see. I'd love to find a frame like that to put this in. So those are some of my fractors that I wanted to show you. Um, aren't they pretty? <laughs> um, one last thing about fractors. I forgot to say Pennsylvania Dutch the nickname came because it's Deutsch, German. So Pennsylvania Deutsch became Pennsylvania Dutch. There you go. <laughs> and the last thing I think I'll show you today is um, from the Cabinet of Wonders. <laughs> That's what I'm going to call when I dig in the past and pull out some other craft, I guess. It's going to come from the Cabinet of Wonders. Uh, it sounds more exciting that way. <laughs> And by the way, I, I know you're not supposed to apologize on floss tube, and here I am apologizing. But Kitten Stitcher was talking about don't say um, and I realized how many times I say um, so I am apologizing once and for all. Hopefully I won't ever apologize again, and I won't ever say um again. <laughs> don't hold me to that. But I'm going to show you some of the quilts I made. Uh, I think I said before in one of the videos that my mom had been sick, and 
we had a wonderful hospice team that came when she was sick. And one of the women who would give her these wonderful back massages would say to me, what are you doing hanging around? You, you, go out, you go out and eat bonbons or something. Do whatever you like. So I would troop out to the barn and I would sew. So that whole year I got quite a lot of quilts done because this wonderful woman was entertaining my mother and giving her these lovely back massages and they told me to get lost basically, <laughs> which gave me a rest and a break and was very much appreciated. So I did a lot of uh, piecing of quilt tops, and I think all of these are actually uh, Missouri Star quilt patterns. Um, Jenny Doan does these fabulous YouTube videos. It makes everything seem so easy. Uh, if you haven't seen her, you really need to go watch Missouri Star Quilt Company videos because she's a lot of fun to watch and great tuition. So. Uh, the first one I'm going to show you is called Ribbon Star Quilt. Um, the fabric is, I just heard myself say, um, the fabric is a Sherry and Chelsea design from Moda called Desert Bloom. This is Sherry McConnell, who's somebody that I follow. I love reading her blog. I follow her on Instagram. She does a lot of stitching for Bonnie and Camille, and ha her fabrics have that sort of fresh, um, colorful, I don't know. I like them. They're cheery. I do do a lot of traditional things. I do a lot of uh, darker colors and traditional fabrics and sort of Civil War time fabrics or primitive gatherings type fabrics. I love all those. But I also love the bright colorful things too, so why limit yourself? So here is a uh, ribbon star quilt. And by the way, Sherry's blog is called A Quilting Life. So here, I guess I have to stand up to show you these. Oh. So here's Ribbon Star Quilt. So all these tops are pieced. I just have to put the backing fabric on, quilt, make the quilt sandwich, and then actually quilt them. So I should say I just have a lot of piece tops, but this is fun. I like this pattern. You can see there. So that's one. Um, next one was inspired because my daughter and I got into this thing. I was taking her to some sort of, I don't know whether it was a sports events or something, but we, she would pop in the Hamilton soundtrack, which I did not think I was going to enjoy listening to. I know every one of those songs. I would love to see that show on Broadway. I just think it's fantastic. I love history and I loved the genre. I didn't think I would like anything that was sort of rap, but when you hear it, and it's, I think Lin-Manuel Miranda's a genius, so I love that. And this fabric, um, it's called, it's either called Hamilton or Eliza Hamilton. It's by Wyndham. It kind of has that French general feeling to it. Um, I think it is called Eliza Hamilton 1770 to 1790. And the pattern is broken dishes. And it does look like a lot of china that's been broken up and then pieced together. But I kind of made this one thinking about my daughter. She has another quilt that I made her that I think she's going to take to college, but this one is fun. It's got some reds and grays and soft blues. And if you, I hold it up, you can see how it does look like, well, if you use your imagination, it looks like broken dishes. You can imagine all the china patterns and then the dishes breaking and then them all being reassembled together instead of as they should have been. Uh, next one is called Crosswalk Quilt, Simply Chic, Anna Stewart for Ben Artex. This one, I, I tried writing a blog and I found I, I didn't have the stick to it power for that. So we'll see if I stick to these philosophy videos. Um, this one reminded me of a picnic so much. I just had to do it in picnic colors. And I always picture Emma and, is it Mr. Knightley? Emma and Mr. Knightley and Miss, is it, can't remember the old spinster's name, uh, in the book Emma, Jane Austen. And they're having the picnic, they've trooped up the hill, it's a beautiful setting. And Emma sort of mocks the older woman. And Mr. Knightley's not having it, you know, he, he gives a real dressing down later. He says, badly done, Emma, badly done. I love that. 
I just love that. <laughs> Puts her in her place. And uh, so this is sort of, it reminds me of Emma and the picnic scene anyway. Because doesn't this look like a big picnic basket? It does not look like 1700s, but it certainly has a throw this on the beautiful meadow feel to it and plop down and have a lovely picnic. So it's just bright and cheery. Again, the pattern's called crosswalk. I'm not doing a terribly good job showing these, I suppose, because I should have stood farther back. I didn't think about it ahead of time. I'll get, I hope I'll get better at these videos as time goes on. What's the, the final one is a fig tree um, fabric called Chestnut Street. And the pattern is square within a square. And this reminds me of library books. See if it does for you too. So, and then I did a, a pieced um, border which is fun, just to make it more colorful. I just wanted these for, you know, you're watching television, grab one, throw it over your lap, sort of quilts. We do have a lot of blankets, which of course are washable, and when we had a dog and a cat, um, that was very handy. Sadly, we have no dog and no cat, and my son, we don't even have our bearded dragon lizard anymore. My son said, well, what's the point coming home? <laughs> so we should get some more pets. But my husband keeps taunting me when I talk about a dog or a cat. He, I know he's torn, but he says, um, well, we can travel, which he knows floats my boat. So it shuts me up for a little while. Um, and I feel like saying, yeah, well, show me the tickets then. You know, you keep saying this. Where are those uh, airplane tickets? I haven't seen them yet, but uh, we haven't, uh, sadly, at present, have a dog or a cat. So I could replace the sort of washable blankets with these quilts if I ever get them if I get the tops quilted. Um, I also have, and you'll laugh about this, I have a quilt I made my mother, which she used for many years that I never bound. Uh, you know, I was on to the next thing and then I couldn't find the binding fabric. Well, I've found the binding fabric now, so I should reclaim that quilt and put the binding on, for heaven's sake. But, uh, you know, that's the way I roll. Sometimes I'm just in too much of a hurry and I just want to, use the things or get them done and I just cut corners. I will tell you and you will be horrified if you're a knitter. I once made a Fair Isle sweater and I made it too tight. Like I, I, I did about this much of it and I tried it on. I thought, oh, that I should have made it a couple inches bigger for my belly. And uh, instead of taking the whole thing down, which was only about that much work, I stitched, I knitted another piece about this big and sewed it off <laughs> and then joined it and kept knitting. It's like, I don't think I would do that now. I think I have learned a little more patience, but I was so on a mission to get that sweater made that I couldn't bear to tear out what I had done. And if you look closely at some of my cross stitch, you might see there are places where I've managed to fudge a few things here and there, but you know, life is short. So with that, I will say, I hope you have a wonderful week. Um, I hope you had lots of stitching done. I hope I didn't show you up my nose too much or say too many ums to turn you off. And all good things. Bye.